What's up, Pro Guides family? Welcome back to another fantastic video. My name is Dan, and today we're talking about a very exciting topic. This is something every single player should have a basic grasp on, and there's even a specific role to play that can go hand in hand with this playstyle. Today, we're talking about playing aggressively, and this can go along perfectly with the entry fragger role, where you take the reins for your team and attempt to clear out the site for your team. Before we get started though, we once again have our question of the day. Today's questions are, how often do you play Valorant, and how long do you think the game will last in the spotlight? We know Valorant at the moment is a pretty solid game, with a very solid player base, what do you think it will look like once the game is dated? Personally, I think Riot knows what they're doing, with them already having a hugely successful game in League, and so far it looks like they're going for the same strategy here. They're letting the competitive scene start with some community tournaments and are going to be building up hype as they release more and more sponsored events or even just hosting their own events. So we're talking about playing aggressive. Some of you may wonder why it's even important to learn this playstyle. The biggest thing people need to understand with playstyles is the fact that no matter who you are, you should attempt to have a grasp on both playstyles. It's perfectly fine to be a passive player and adapt a passive playstyle, but you should really try your absolute hardest to adapt the opposite playstyle of your current so you're able to perform in more situations than you're comfortable with currently. Playing aggressive is hard for a lot of players. It forces you out of your comfort zone and will force you to adapt to the playstyle. With passive play, it's usually very easy to just sit back and play more reactive. But with aggressive play, you need to time your pushes and find openings you can actually exploit. In this guide, we're going to talk about the basics of playing aggressive and how to put yourself into an entry fragger role. And an entry fragger, for those who may not know, will be the first player into a site and usually the first to die in given rounds. Entry fragging is an extremely selfless role, as you will die a lot while playing it, but will be providing crucial information to your team. Now, moving on, we're going to talk about fine-tuning your playstyle. Adopting an aggressive play is very easy, but it requires good aim and confidence in your own personal play. If you're not a very confident player, playing aggressively might be difficult for you. But if you're not the most confident, trying to play more aggressive and learning to play aggressive could be a great decision. It will help you learn to play with more confidence in situations and show you options you may not have realized before. So the basics of playing aggressive are actually a little complicated. Fast, precise, and timed aggression is going to be your best friend. This requires a lot of game sense, and you will have to be able to make a lot of predictions of what the enemy team is actually doing in a given moment. What do we mean when we say fast, precise, and timed aggression? Let's clarify a little bit further on the topic at hand. When you're deciding to get aggressive, it's very important that you have a clear goal in mind. If you do not really have a set idea of what you're trying to accomplish, being aggressive will lead you to getting killed more often than not. The reason being is you will have to think much more on the fly than you might be used to. When you go in with a set goal in mind, you will be able to much more effectively accomplish what you're trying to do. The only thing you will actually have to worry about is the enemy team adjusting to your aggression and shutting down and dealing with deviations in your plan. A good aggressive plan for the attacker side would look something like this. Your team decides to do a fast push towards A site on Haven, so you come up with a plan in your head, as the first man in, to swiftly gain control of a certain part of the site. Let's say, for instance, you're playing Phoenix. You have a varied set of tools in your kit, ranging from flashes to line of sight blocking walls. You come up with a plan, push up A short with a flashbang, and gain control of it for your team. From there on, you throw another flashbang and place down a blaze wall, cutting off the right side of A site, in between boost box and default box. You can then continue on and follow up with a quick push into the site, clearing as many angles as possible. It's important that you clear out as many angles as possible to create space for your team to actually push onto the site. The big thing with playing aggressive and even entry fragging for your team is you must be creating space and you must never hesitate in your decisions. If you hesitate, your team hesitates. And if your team hesitates, you become sitting ducks. This can cause a lot of unnecessary death and confusion on your team. So be sure to always seem sure of yourself even if you really aren't. The reason creating space is so important is that it gives your team much more leeway to actually get onto the site effectively. The more space you create and the more angles you clear, the less your team has to worry about and the more space they have to freely move around the bomb site once you have secured it. Let's talk about being an entry fragger and why it is such a dominant position if played correctly. So an entry fragger will almost always be the first man in. Usually the entry fragger is the player that has the least amount of abilities left or the player with the lowest health. But in cases where everyone has high health and all their abilities, the entry fragger role will be passed down to whoever wants to take the role up or whoever has more expendable abilities. You wouldn't send a sage in first, as she has some of the most important utility, so it's very important that you keep her alive. There is a very common misconception that the entry fragger has to be a duelist such as Phoenix or Jet. And while in some cases that may be true, it's not always true. 
If you have a player that would like to entry frag, it may be best for the Phoenix to play more like an initiator, where he throws a flashbang to initiate the push. He does not have to be the first one in just because he's a duelist. The entry fragger is going to usually be the most selfless player, and not many players like to play this role as you will end up dead a lot of rounds. Your job as an entry fragger is to clear out as many angles as possible as quickly as possible. It's a very ballsy role, but it's very rewarding. Generally, you want your aim to be pretty decent, but it doesn't have to be perfect to be placed in this role. Entry fragging is a very good role for newer players to help them improve exponentially over a short period of time. It will place you far outside of your comfort zone and force you to react quickly and on the fly. Quick reactions, good aim, and decent game sense is what it takes to become a solid entry frag player. There are many ways you can practice playing this role, such as going into a custom map and learning common spots to hide and even angles to pre-aim. Creating space is easily one of the most important tactics you need to utilize as an entry fragger. Make sure you're pushing in and using angle isolation to your advantage as well. If you do not know what angle isolation is, it is simply making sure you're not exposing yourself to two angles at once. You want to be aware of the angles you're peaking, and you want to be very careful that you aren't exposing yourself to too many at a time. The entry fragger is a role touted as being very difficult, but it honestly, it's not that hard of a role and we recommend beginners take this role up to help them improve faster. One of the biggest things to note is that entry fragging takes a bit of awareness of what's going on around the map. You want to make sure the team is ready to actually push in and react to what you're trying to do. Don't leave your team in the dust and just move on completely without them, as doing this will get you killed without your team actually being there to follow up and trade you out. Now, being an aggressive player does not mean you have to put yourself in the entry frag role. There are many ways you can play aggressively without actually playing in the entry frag position. You can try and take peeks against enemies if you're confident in winning aim duels, you can sneak in through smokes and try and get a flank off, or you can do the good old strategy of just running around peeking every angle you can find. Just be aware that it can be a very dangerous way to play, and there needs to be a balance between passivity and aggression. Good aggression on the attacker side will usually just look like taking risky peeks and gaining control of defender-sided areas on the map. A defender-sided area would look something like Hookah on b site Vine. The defenders usually start off with control of Hookah, but the attackers can take it from them fairly easily by utilizing minor aggression. Just be very careful about what peeks you're taking and how you're going about taking map control. Poor aggression would look something like running down the middle with no concern for your life. As an aggressive player, you need to be finding a hole in the enemy defense and attacking it right when you find the most opportune moment. That was just the basics of slight aggression and the role of an entry fragger. You can choose to be an entry or you can choose to simply work a little bit of aggression into your playstyle. It takes time and game sense to actually master this playstyle, but it is very important that you are not a static player. You need to be able to play passive and aggressive to a good level. Now, playing aggressive on defense is very good when done correctly. This is where timing your push becomes extremely important. One of the biggest things I see is the enemy team or someone on my team will wait until a certain time and push into a certain area every single time. This is very bad and makes you extremely predictable. You do not want to get aggressive every round, and if you are deciding to get aggressive every round, it is very important that you do not push into the same spot over and over. The enemy will start being able to predict you and will just wait for you to push in every round. It's very important that you spread your aggression out around the rounds and around the map. You don't have to get aggressive, but it can be utilized fairly well in ranked and casual games. One of the best ways to get aggressive is to wait until you believe it's clear and make a very clear decision to push in and flank. An example of this would be pushing C on Haven and flanking middle if you know they rarely put any players towards C. If they have a repeating pattern of little to no aggression in some areas, those will be the easiest to push into. Just be very careful if the enemy team decides to set up defenses outside of the area you're pushing into, you will usually lose that gunfight as you will most likely be walking in slowly and will be a fairly easy target. The main thing about getting aggressive on defense is it not only can secure you rounds, but it will instill fear into the enemy team and make them keep watching their back. Aggression can shift the way your opponents play the rest of the rounds all over one or two rounds of you actually getting aggressive. So in the end, this wasn't a super in-depth chat about aggression, but it's more of a baseline explanation of the entry fragger role and what good aggression on defense would look like. It's important that you do not become an over-aggressive player and are very smart and methodical about the way you approach your aggressive playstyle. If you want more help learning how to play aggressive and how to improve your game sense, be sure to check out ProGuides.com where we have amazing coaches standing by to help you improve. 
Talk with any of our on-demand coaches to find the perfect one to help you climb the ranks. That is going to bring us to the end of our video talking about aggression. Hopefully you all learned something here that you can place into your play style, whether it be a decision to become an entry fragger or a realization that you need to become slightly more aggressive in your play style. We just hope that you actually got some useful insight into this game and the way it can be played. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, maybe even subscribe while you're at it. This has been Dan with Pro Guides. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman, signing off, and I will see you all in the next video.